today I will continue printing session what I make in the previous video. I will try to fix a lot of problems with my setup, so I'll try to decrease Newton rings and try to fix some strange cast in the pictures and find the reason why it's actually happening. I will load the same negative from my trip to Venice, Italy, but before let's discuss a little bit of the problem of the Newton rings. From the beginning I thought these glass plates, what I have on my enlarger carrier, should be anti-Newton glass, but unfortunately this is just a standard glass and if you press flat the glass on the top side to the flat side of the negative, it creates the Newton rings. So usual thing, how to avoid this effect, you need a, a little bit of roughness on top of the surface of the top glass. And you can say this is anti-Newton glass. So in principle it doesn't create the thin film effect of air pocket, but you can also avoid it in a different tricks. In my case I will use this anti perspirant spray. It's not the perfect solution, but if you spray it slightly on top of the top plate, you will get top glass a little bit foggy. So usually it deposited aluminum salt or aluminum chloride, for example, on top of the glass. It's a good quick hack, but I will in future buy the anti-Newton glass for the top surface. So this picture I already have a settings, which I measured last time, and I will start from these settings. So I'll transfer it here on my photo head. And because I have the same magnification, I will just realign my frame and easel and crop the picture to remove all the white borders. So if I done everything right, I should completely remove the problem of the Newton rings on this picture because it was a Newton rings in the five different places. So in case of this simple carrier actually removing all the dust from the surface create a little bit more problem with the color and the Newton rings on the final photo. So let's run first exposure and develop the picture with the corrected temperature what I found the last time. So at the moment I setting up my circulator to 35.2 degrees and check temperature with the digital thermometer in my bottle. I don't know why, but the temperature deviation you can correct it, but unfortunately you cannot correct the depth of colors, vibrance and contrast. And most importantly, you have repeatability and more straightforward color corrections and it's more understandable in future how to make the same result in the different setups. So let's run 45 seconds of color developer with a 35 degrees and 45 seconds of bleach fix with the constant rotations and both directions. And at the moment I try to keep everything tidy with the time because you anyway have a different pH solutions inside the bottle and it's interacting with the paper. And you need to understand it's not really good thing to put the, a lot of acid on top of the emulsion and keep it there forever. So not over bleach or not over fix or not over stop your pictures. Otherwise your emulsion actually gets a little bit sticky and it's not the same quality of the paper anymore. So at the moment I rinse it inside the drum itself and quickly rinse it afterwards with water and this is my final print and as you can see I have zero problems with the dust, I don't have any problems with the Newton rings and I really like this idea method and setup what I have with the anti-static gun and I just need to fix the top plate to make it anti-Newton. So far I don't have any problems with the strange color tint, so I can move on for the different exposure and make a different print. I have this interesting negative with the overexposed Kodak 200, which gives you this thick overexposed look and grainy shadows and grainy highlights. And I actually really like sometimes to use this advantage of this film. And now I want to try to repeat this look and feel directly on the paper from the negative. So I will crop down the picture to remove all the white parts and the borders from the negative to make more precise calibration of this picture. Because I have a lot of sky in this print and it's not a lot of like pure black or pure color here and because it was shot on f11 I have a lot of sharpness on the picture and for now I can go with a calibration procedure, so taking diffusion filter, put the calibration hat on the table 
and find the maximum spot of intensity under the picture and go with the cyan channel, find the exposure with the exposure knob, go for the magenta channel and go for the yellow channel and set up my photo head to required settings. And because I developed all of these films myself with a precise care about the temperature, I already know the picture and settings should be more or less symmetrical. And as you can see, I have a little bit of shift from previous picture with the cyan channel, but it most probably because I have an overexposure on this picture around two stops. And now I have not 6060, I have 53550, f11 and 6.5 seconds of measured exposure. Probably I will have on this exposure too much of the density because in general this picture is a light picture. We have a white stairs and you have a background which is sky and it should be completely white and the whole picture should be high contrast and actually have a, a lot of whites so it should be a little bit less dense than the neutral gray. And again now on this picture I have a strange tint so I cannot recognize it, it came from one channel on my photo head. It means it's not really correctable with anything. And for a long period of time I'm thinking like what is exactly the problem what I have with these prints and why it's happening sometimes. So because for video shooting in YouTube here I'm using relatively bright light and I need more time to compensate my eyes to complete darkness and see better with a safe light. And at one point I realized I making the same mistake all over again and I printed this print without any problems and I found the only one reason why this color shift and color tint is actually happening. So this is exactly the same setting and exactly the same picture what I print before. And as you can see I have absolutely gorgeous colors and overexposed look on a background building. No problems with the dust and zero problems with the Newton rings. So if you compare these two prints, the first one with the 4.5 seconds and the next one, I don't have any more this strange full color on the whole picture. So in the problem, this crazy dim, almost invisible blue light, which is actually shining through the surface of my light. So if I forget to turn it off, it creates a lot of problems. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.